ஓகேங்க ஐ கேன் நீங்க இப்ப பார்க்க முடியுதுங்களா என்னோட ஷேரிங் ஆ இருக்குமா ஷேரிங் பார்க்க முடியுதுங்க ஐயா PDF ல தான் போட்டுருக்காங்க ஐயா சரிங்கம்மா கண்ணி பண்றேன்மா ஒரு முறை முயற்சி பண்ணிடுறேன் ஒரே ஒரு நிமிஷம் கூகுள் சர்வீசஸ் டவுனா சரி இது லைவ் யூடியூப் வந்து பண்ணல லோக்கல் பண்ணிருக்கிறேன் ஓடிட்டு இருக்குது வாழ்க உடம்பு வாழ்க வையகம் வாழ்க வையகம் வாழ்க வளமுடன் friends today we are going to discuss us uh, about the very important subjects moralization of desires before starting i would like to share my experience in vedatriyam when i finished my college education in 2004 i was searched for uh, peace so i got an introduction with the velupuram manavala kalai mandram through my sister i still remember those great uh, gathering in which our guru with those legs with white socks i still remember that scene and vairamuthu everybody are present in that honorable moment i think guru would have seen me but i don't remember at that time so after that uh, due to next stages of life uh, here and there uh, uh, i was uh, moving around on the places of the world so wherever i go um, i will come up with manavala kalai mantram group attachment uh, either i will search for it or uh, somehow by passing on the roads i will come up with the um, mandram uh, banners so i will immediately jump into that and get contact so like that um although i have finished msc in yoga for human excellence i'm still learning by experiencing in practical life my goal is to teach vedatriyam here and wherever i go and its principles for world peace so now we are coming to one of the very important subjects this spiritual course is not only for truth seekers but for all people this practice will result in happiness success harmony and peace this is moralization of desires dreading the bonds of desires is a virtue be not a slave to desires that deceive this is written by our um, thiruvalluvar what is meant by desire desires are also called wish or want it's a longing or aspiration annihilation craving or earning in the olden days 
enlightened people looked upon desire as an undesirable quality. We have seen <coughs> Lord Buddha used to say the root cause of suffering is attachment. But we no need to escape from the day-to-day -day life and go into the forest as we have come all the way through the process of evolution as animals in the forest. So we no need to uh, worry for the desires. So our Magrishi has given techniques. We'll come up with that sooner. The desires are classified into three categories uh, based on desire for land, We know the great Alexander, the great emperor. When Alexander the Great, after conquering kingdoms, returning to his country, he fell ill that led him to his deathbed. He gathered his generals and told them, I will depart from this world soon. I have the three wishes. Please carry them out without fail. The king asked his uh, gods to abide by three last wishes. The king of Macedon, Alexander said, my friend alone must only carry me my coffin. Next, I desire that when my coffin is being carried to the grave, the path leading to the graveyard be filled with the wealth that I collected, the king said. My third and last wish is that both my hands be kept hanging out of my coffin, Alexander said. The generals agreed to abide by this king's last wishes and asked him the reason for doing so. Alexander said, I want the world to know the three lessons I have just learned. The king interpreted his wishes and continued. I want my physicians to carry my coffin because people should realize that no doctor on this earth can really cure anybody. They are helpless in front of death. Describing his second wish, the king said, I spent all my life earning riches, but cannot take anything with me. Let people know that wealth is nothing but dust. Thirdly, I wish people to know that I came empty handed into this world and I will go empty handed. So, we don't need to learn these things at the deathbed, thank God, Vedatri Magarishi, our spiritual guru, has given techniques. Um, next, desire for land, desire for wealth, that we see many gold mines, business owners without service mind, only bounded to profits. It is uh, the current situation that we are uh, going on right now, based on the greed. So the third one is the opposite gender, or we can say immoral sexual patient. We all know the famous uh, Battle of Troy was due to immoral sexual patient. So, um, uh, they advised people to rid themselves of all desires under the wrong impression that it helps spiritual development. Their aim was probably to eliminate only the evil desires. 
spiritual enlightenment itself is a desire. The basic needs to live by having food, clothing and shelter are inevitable. Desire for them is natural. We are born into this world and live on it by constructing houses. So desire for land is also natural. Gold and money are token of exchange for all the commodities essential for survival. As regards to women, we all born from women and live with the assistance of them. When anybody attains the uh, correct age of marriage, let them let they get the correct match for their need. So we live on earth using the money and gold with the assistance of womanhood. No need to change these three desires, but to moralize them by regulating our mind. Use the wisdom and benefit from them. When we see desires are born of thoughts, the, our thought is becoming the desire when we think of it repeatedly. Thoughts are the result of working mind. Here, our thoughts, once it is uh, pressurized, it will lead to desire. That we are desiring, our mind is working on it. In our body, so when the body cells are being registered with that with desire, we become that desire. Here, we have to understand one truth of nature. Mind is very fast, body is very slow when comparing with the speed of the mind. I think mind can travel is a, beyond the speed of light. Even now we can expand all over the universe to see the absolute space. So this is a productive way. In other way, uh, coming to the um, desires, mind can desire 100 wishes in one day, even one hour. To fulfill the desires, those diseases, how many days or years are required to the body? So what we do, without knowing the capacity of the body, we are creating, developing desires more and more and more and more according to the speed of mind. When the desire is allowed or aroused, if it is not fulfilled, what will happen? Unfulfilled desires will always disturb the mind. You will get disappointment, conflict, worry, all are coming only from the unfulfilled desires. Suppose if you are thinking of one thing and not getting on time or quantity, 
there you are worried. Between the stock and need, between the imagination and actuality, between the expectation and achievement, if there is gap, mind gets disturbed. For example, we need natural uh, needs, sensations and needs, those arising from hunger. We need food to fulfill our hunger. We cannot condition ourselves that I don't like upma. I want this particular food from this particular restaurant or that is greed. Variations in climatic conditions like we need clothing based on the climatic conditions. And when the, these considering the clothing that is made of uh, silk sari or anything, we know that it is produced by killing millions of silk worms. So we can uh, give a thought analysis, do we actually need that? And then those, uh, the third one, those from excretory forces, like our uh, um, shelter, we no need to keep on expanding the um, from buying a property of land. So when the basic needs are fetched, then that is satisfied. We want to always really peace and happiness and satisfaction. Desires born of needs should disappear once they are satisfied. But it's not the case. Mind gets attracted to the pleasures born of the process. Desires arise even in the absence of need. These desires should be controlled as they arise in the illusory state of the mind. Fulfilling those desires result in expenditure of life energy and problems. You need not completely avoid all the desires. We cannot avoid because until the soul is working within the body, the mind has to function. The mind always will work getting attachment with anything that may be need or that may be imagination, whatever it may be. So without desire, we cannot live on the earth. We have come to this place. There is no desire, we cannot go back. Yes, it's uh, the God's desire. Excuse me. God's desire for the universe evolution and finally their realization. So without, uh, uh, without any desire, we cannot go back. So this way, the natural way, Desire is also coming. Suppose we are sitting now, call of nature, appetite, 
all are coming again and again. We have to fulfill. To fulfill all these needs, we think of the commodities, facilities, particles, and actions. All these are desires. So this desire is the proof of living. We cannot avoid this desire. Even if we escape and go to the forest also, we'll keep on thinking about these commodities, facilities that we used and uh, that is that will not lead to spiritual enlightenment. So we cannot avoid this desire. At the same time, we have to moralize our desire to the best of happiness and peace. Already, without knowing, we have created, developed many desires. Now, we understand all that desires according to the speed of the mind developed cannot be fulfilled by the body in our time. They say art is long, life is short. But if the, uh, so mind is fast, body is uh, bounded. So this should be analyzed for the reasons behind it and put to action. Only if it doesn't affect anyone adversely, the means for satisfying is available. After that, desires cannot be suppressed. If it is genuine and needed, it should be fulfilled as a matter of duty without undue attachment to the desire. If it is not a beneficial one, it can be analyzed with total awareness and eliminated using auto-suggestion. It's as simple as it is with the help of uh, Maharishi's uh, techniques and auto-suggestions, uh, we can regulate our mind. Now we understand that all that desires according to the speed of the mind developed cannot be fulfilled by the body in our time. So when uh, we cannot get failure or miseries or worries or depression, all these. So we have to get a satisfaction. Our mind has to be always in the peaceful state. If a desire aroused, which is not fulfilled, mind cannot be peaceful. We have to keep our mind always in the state of peace. For that, this practice will be more helpful. They say the like lotus leaf water, the detached attachment. For that, this practice will be more helpful. When enjoying pleasures or connecting with things, use only your senses with full awareness. Mind shouldn't be attached with it. This is called a state of detached attachment. Like uh, when we have to gather in the uh, party gatherings, we need to uh, fit for that social gathering. Like, uh, like uh, that uh, we create sand castles on the beaches, like that. Uh, and uh, once, the, uh, once the beach water comes and uh, demolishes the castle, it will go away. Then we will not get any disappointment in that state, right? So this, kind of uh, detached attachment is needed during that time. For example, we use pillow. Use it only when you sleep. Don't keep it with you all the time. 
attachment to five things namely wealth people physical relationship fame and prestige is natural but should be experienced with awareness and as a part of one's duty here i would like to um uh, quote some examples that i know um like for example um chatting with the friends in this uh, in this uh, website world yeah, that should be of uh, limited method beauty consciousness those ads that repeatedly attend or impose our uh, thing to um, believe in uh, a big scam uh, that should be in limited method when we see the ads we constantly see only the um jewelry things grocery things beauty things and uh, all these um, uh, are getting attracted then here in uh, us i have seen the lottery tickets uh, people are uh, crave is like that maharishi says um for the cause of the uh, government sake uh, uh, revenue for government sake only is the um attached mind for that uh, buying lottery ticket not uh, like uh, it is like entitled to action and not to its fruits uh, above may be compared to the care exercise to avoid drowning while bathing in a river yes so the children uh, once saw uh, the blue whale game was very um, atrocious that is an example like drowning while bathing in a river and uh, attachment to education like uh, that uh, poor girl she needed medicine seat she constrained herself we should not uh, be conditional like i need to get a higher education that should be our concern only condition then only we'll come up with the man proposes and god disposes which is actually not our prayer should be regulated so what is the purpose of cell phone it is limited for calls and messages and emails with that limit and method if we use that's for good problems and miseries are the result of deeds born of attachments goes against the purpose of life unchecked desires transforms into the six emotional moods namely greed anger miscellaneous immoral sexual passion vanity vengeance uh, we we know that uh, story like uh, that uh, a couple will be living in the hut the lady will they will come up with the strange fish then uh, that uh, fisherman uh, will know that that is a special fish that will offer uh, wishes so they will ask for uh, 
more and more and more and more desires then after conquering the world uh, she will go and ask for uh, sun and uh, the entire uh, universe but that could not be um, fetched so again she she will come up with a conclusion that she will end up with the same old hut that is more and more uh, with full space now that she has attained the satisfied mind so we have to keep our mind always in the state of peace uh, this practice will be more helpful for that without understanding we would have created many desires now all the desires are within us many desires are to be fulfilled all right now we have to do one thing just take a paper and pencil write down what are the desires unfulfilled you are having in your mind write down one after other giving serial numbers it may come to 10 or 12 or 20 let it come sometimes you would have forgotten one or two but during the bedtime it will come to mind in this way within a day or two write down all the desires then sit one hour of silence this one hour is the investment for many days in your life so one hour is not waste you may think there is no time for me but it's we are wasting much of our time this one hour time will save a great number of days in our lifetime therefore you take one hour and sit first you think of one desire first desire on the top on the top of our technique without achieving that desire can i not live peacefully this is the question that you need to raise without achieving that desire can i not live peacefully you put that question if you check answer if it is a must for me then that desire is to be fulfilled then that desire is to be fulfilled analyze from the following aspects what is the root cause of desire is that desire for good can i live and be content without this desire what will be the result to me and others can i physically and financially afford to attend check the answer otherwise i cannot all right now you know the importance of the desire if so by my physical health or financial strength and other mental faculties can i achieve this yes then sort out a plan of achievement work on it based on the plan then step by step i will achieve it if you have to develop some mental faculty supposing you have done only two years in the law one year to be completed for that higher education before that we have left the school now you have to plan fulfill or complete the course then only you become a lawyer or complete that education if the desire is to be a lawyer you have to complete the course so in that way can i develop my ability to that effect to achieve that goal not possible it's all right to achieve it all right what to be done if it is not possible what to be done we have to eliminate that desire unwanted desires should be eliminated by appropriate auto suggestion because understanding the inability of your education or body or whatever it may be understanding our inability 
then think what is the use when can i when i cannot achieve what is the use of keeping the desire within me so i cannot achieve this i have to change my desire to some successful function or action or work you can eliminate or keep the desire for fulfillment inadvisable to retain hundreds of unfilled desires for it leads to lack of peace and deterioration of mental and physical health so keep the desire for fulfillment or eliminate it then plan for the achievement if you would like to keep the desire for fulfillment when after checking the answer plan for the achievement according to the plan you have to work and then take the next desire then work on it as it is find out the pros and cons then make out a plan for it if it is also to be deleted then you give a auto suggestion and decision on the remark column on the conclusion column the like like with this statement like this is for this reason i cannot achieve it it is not possible even though i achieved this desired thing i have to pay such and such consequences that is very bad and miserable so i don't need so in this way you go to the result also after achievement they say after math you do that work on it like this you go on up to that end you go on understanding if i fulfill the desire what are the consequences if i don't fulfill what are the other things you have to, what are the consequences you have to select this way you give the decision take the decision for all the desires then you what what are the desires you can fulfill then take them work on it as you have planned then your energy is saved energy is streamlined mind is moralized so here you will not think of anything other than what you can achieve here is the success so here is the satisfaction you are going in the way whatever desires come if you are able to achieve achieving and enjoying the benefit and experiencing there is the peace there is the happiness there is the success in life mind becomes happy contented and clear then it results in confidence and enthusiasm then we'll have respect in society then the results in good character patience charity contented mind family peace is achieved by harmony so this success always mind will be peaceful and the development of the mind and enlightenment of the consciousness is easy to all of us otherwise when the desire is piled up more and more if you fulfill some desire may be fulfilled that it will not get satisfied it is not at all satisfaction some of the desires even though it is fulfilled it is not at all satisfaction in this way you have to fulfill the desire what you get you have to moralize the desire this is the second practice not simply teaching practice practicing just you have to sit and apply it in the practical life then see where you are what you are there is the real peace real satisfaction there is a real harmony so maybe in the initial stages you can uh, sit after one hour of silence every week 
or every month then work on the technique after that this will become a habit this as this is a second practice uh, after thought analysis our mind will be attuned to check when and when, uh, whenever the thought arises In these words i conclude my speech and wish all of you success and happiness in your life by moralizing and applying this technique into practical experience be blessed with the divine be blessed by the divine thank you everyone wonderful session uh, any questions from anyone i can anyone mute uh, themselves or uh, or you can raise your hand people on youtube write it in the chat okay so no questions uh, thank you ma uh, by the way ah. can you hear me while yes. i'm done this chanta so uh, very well explained uh, how to handle the desire and how to modelize it uh, one quick question um, what's the difference between a dream and desire because the current education here in us is always encouraging all the kids to dream big and they get so involved in that they don't see the practicality um, it becomes a desire for them you know like whatever they say yeah you have the style and you can be this but in reality we know that is not good for my child but you cannot um, explain or try to convince them because that's how they are being educated and taught um so just wanted to find out um what's the major difference when you say a dream and a desire um yes amma dream uh, like uh, desires that is for the improvement of life are to be respected that's what maharishi says in that also like uh, um the, like uh, we can uh, like uh, abdul abdul kalam also says to dream big uh, to achieve big like uh, they can do the pros and cons and uh, see it can be achieved or not like uh, for example um they launched the uh, um spacex and uh, nasa both launched the satellite to the space station um anybody can uh, dream for becoming an astronaut but uh, what i would uh, uh, say an easy uh, way is like uh, with the mind we can travel beyond the uh, space station and uh, we we are astronauts even now that's what is my understanding uh, because uh, i too had a wish to view niagara falls but uh, that didn't happen from sitting here i can uh, visualize um, that uh, falls every day uh, in our uh, uh, five elements meditation so uh, dreaming 
uh, is good for children, but uh, it should not uh, lead to superiority complex or uh, uh, that uh, overconfidence level, um, and uh, uh, and that uh, and then uh, they will come up with uh, dis uh, dissatisfaction. So um, they can uh, dream. Uh, like uh, they they need to express to the parents with with the help of parents they can uh, everybody can do the aftermath and uh, uh, will come to the conclusion mm, and uh, that is what it is said entitled to action and not to its fruits they need to really work on it if they are patient about that and uh, work on it then they will achieve it so um, parents can guide all these uh, uh, spiritual discourse uh, um, and then they need to show their pitch and method of the kids and the body and uh, uh, mental strength and uh, the financial strength and uh, the society uh, situation, everything and uh, they can very well come up with the conclusion and moralize the desires. Uh, okay. can I also add some more, right? Uh, okay. Well said, Amma. I think dreaming is is uh, uh, good. Shanta uh, Mukhum, we passed the question, right? So, dreaming uh, is, is visualizing what you want, right? As long as the what you want is is good for you and uh, good for everybody, it is fine, right? And uh, sometimes we need to have that big uh, dream uh, so that we can start working towards it. So that that should be a possibility as well. It should be possible. Uh, whether the possibility could be lesser, that is fine. Uh, but it should be uh, in a way possible, and it is good for uh, self and others. Then it is it is good to have like uh, you want to be a uh, uh, anything or uh, you want to uh, build a big temple of consciousness right in the US or uh, you want to become a strong. all all those things are good because it is good for everybody and you start working towards that at some point if the direction has to be changed uh, depending on the situation then it may be changed you don't need to get uh, uh, stuck with that. But dreaming is uh, good specifically for the younger person, even for uh, elders, as long as it is good for self and others. And there is a remote possibility. It shouldn't be desired like, I want to go to uh, uh, some uh, stars. I mean, like if it, it's not very really helpful or uh, it is a, a very difficult one or something. So if it is, it is good to dream, if it is good for self and others. Yes, I am. Also, mm -hmm. dreams also be uh, moralized because if a, a child if a kid dreams for buying a car and uh, after that uh, his mind changes uh, looking at the uh, big bike so when he changes his desire towards bike then the desire number one is suppressed because of his second desire the desire for bike will eliminate the desire for a car. So kids uh, need to be guided by parents based on this uh, law of uh, nature, with the law of uh, secret that uh, is evolving nowadays. Um, children need to understand the uh, law of nature completely with a complete education, with the help of uh, parents, they can dream big uh, for the betterment of them and the society and the nature as well. Be blessed. Be blessed by the divine. It's a very nice uh, answer. It gives me some clarity here. Thank you. Yeah. The Let me... I think what I understood based on the question is uh, the difference between the desire and the dream. The desire's origination point is based on the need. And there are other reasons the desire will arise. 
and the desires are recorded in our genetic center. And that means it goes to the root, to the inner mind. The dream is when the external mind is actually in the sleep state. The inner mind is in action. It is trying to play back all the recordings from your genetic center. It's basically visualization by the inner mind during the sleep. That's dream. Desire is when you are awake, you're thinking about that desire. And that desire arises by, based on the need and all other surrounding reasons. That's the difference. Then how to handle between desire and a dream. That's what you just heard from uh, Master Mahadevi Amma and Master Prabhuya. Hope this adds more. Tangavelu, I have had a question as well. Tangavelu, yeah. Uh, thank you, Aya. Uh, be blessed by the divine. Um, at times, I am um, not able to differentiate uh, the need uh, versus uh, the desire. Uh, I'll just go with one example. Um, uh, let's say I and my wife, uh, we go to the store and uh, we are looking for the uh, producers. And yes, uh, most of the time uh, uh, we try to go with uh, yeah, uh, healthy organic stuff. And let's say there are 20 items and um, uh, 15 producers are available organic where five are conventional. and uh, uh, there comes uh, the issue. Uh, my wife says, uh, it's okay, let's go with uh, conventional, it's fine. Uh, you, you don't have to come once again or we don't have to reorder. Whereas I say, uh, no, no, uh, it's okay, I'll come and uh, check check tomorrow or after two days. And uh, I want to go with uh, healthy organic stuff, right? And uh, This is where she says, no, uh, what you're doing is not right. There are so many people who can't even uh, afford to have uh, one meal a day and uh, what you are doing is uh, not justified. So we get into that kind of confusion where I'm not able to really understand uh, whether what I'm looking for is, uh, though it's for uh, uh, healthy uh, eating, uh, I'm thinking like, you know, maybe I'm doing something wrong and uh, so, so these instances uh, often uh, confuses me, and I'm not able to even uh, justify uh, justify it. Uh, please explain me, uh, yeah. Amma, thank you. This uh, conflict, uh, um, this topic comes under family phase. <laughs> that we will go to discuss later, sooner, later. So whatever it is. Now, um, like uh, we need to, the, the truth seekers need to like uh, adjust or tolerate or uh, sacrifice their uh, needs at that the time um, with the life partners, uh, um, wishes at that time to avoid conflict in public. So after that, uh, um, you can sit around, uh, uh, sit relaxedly and do the aftermath. Then if the, like uh, the GMO products or these uh, non-GMO, uh, the pros and cons, everything you can, sit and uh, work on it. So if that is to be, if something is to be avoided, then what is the uh, conditions? So like that you can, um, uh, you can check. Um, um, planning, what is the planning? Uh, 
like uh, where that, uh, planning and the complete education comes in that uh, way that um, and our financial strength uh, everything and uh, and also we need to uh, get satisfied uh, with uh, uh, everything like what you have because uh, we know uh, like Maharishi has sacrificed his one uh, meal a day for the cause of the poverty people so um, uh, we know Mahatma Gandhi has sacrificed uh, sacrificed uh, wearing shirt because uh, of one boy's uh, um, uh, poor, poor people so uh, needy or uh, um, there so mahatma gandhi also says uh, like uh, uh, this world is sufficient uh, uh, to fetch the needs of 700 more million people but uh, not for one man's greed so uh, we can uh, plan prioritize with a complete education and uh, apply adjustment, tolerance, and sacrifice formula. And then you can do Kai Kalpa Ojas that will eliminate all that uh, um, misunderstanding that this food is good or not, uh, that thing. And um, like get fulfilled, uh, yeah. This is what uh, is uh, my uh, opinion. Then Arulaya would explain better. Yeah, Arloya, your thoughts, yeah. I feel that this desire is uh, very simple. It can be, it doesn't uh, hurt anybody and it's good for the self. So your thoughts, yeah, how do you handle this kind of? So in a way it is, uh, it is a good um, thinking of actually keeping the, the physical body in a healthy state. Yes, uh, there is no doubt about it. Um, like Amma mentioned, family harmony comes on top. Um, so that's one, <clears throat> that's actually, Tangadalaya's uh, wife mentioned about, you know, think about people who doesn't have not even a single meal a day, it's a wide mind. So thinking of that, um, yeah, you, you go that way. So you save the money then when you save the money, are you really spending that saved money towards those who are, who are in need and help them to feed them? Then that sacrificed decision is correct. You are moving or you are traveling in that right direction. If you cannot achieve that, it is going to be sort of impossible or beyond your limit I mean, taking too much, then it crosses the limit of making it as a worry that you could not accomplish buying the organic produce. So if you detach yourself from that, then you're not going to take it as a, oh, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, right? So based on that current that situation you can decide and in mahan's word where there is less impact you need to be biased on that side and make your decision and move on that's it so you can use that formula in these kind of um, complex situation, make your decision and move on. You can, it definitely will help you. Hope uh, I answered the question. Thank you, Aya. Uh, thank you, Aya. Uh, I think so. Um, yeah, I think uh, I need to uh, start working on um, removing that kind of detachment, that kind of attachment and start detaching a little bit uh, Thank, thank you, Ayat. It makes sense to me. Be blessed by the divine. Uh, be blessed by the divine. And uh, this is the, it's a very good question. And this is a difficult situation happens in every Vedatriam households or even uh, in uh, households where uh, there is greater interest uh, towards 
spirituality or in general towards other human beings and living beings. Um, yeah, sometimes, like I said, oh, we are faced with the situation and have to select uh, the best among the worst. <laughs> you know, you often find this in election times, like you don't have a better choice, but you do have to do your due diligence vote and, um, and you know, make, uh, make the uh, best out of the situation. Um, but yeah, I, I would suggest this, like uh, the formula that uh, earlier had recommended. We can even go back to the table, you know, moralization of desire table. Yes, when at the time of executing this, whether I am satisfying, um, you know, maximum configurations uh, possible or parameters uh, that I'm able to fulfill. Uh, but uh, it's it's very uh, uh, very typical. You're not alone, so be blessed. Thank you. I'd like to add only one more point. Yes, Ayo. Yes, I'm, yeah, yeah. Once you complete, we will uh, complete this session because uh, we are over time. Yeah. Yes, sure. I'd like to add with the last final point, like uh, mm, the. <clears throat> Like it's a, you can take turns, like this time uh, based on your wishes and uh, work on the past experience, if any, like uh, acquired by that enjoyment. If it is good, then you can go forward or else take turns, try for that and um, um, get a, a satisfaction by thinking that we are offering the revenue for the conventions, uh, conventional stores, conventional products. Like we are offering, like uh, we need to be in that uh, state that we are offering help or service. That way you will get satisfied. Thank you, Aya. Be blessed. Thank you, ma'am. Be blessed by the divine. Let's bless Mahadevi Amma by the grace of divine power. Arunodhi Mahadevi Amma and our family may enjoy good health, long life, and of wealth, prosperity, wisdom, and peace. Be blessed by the divine. Be blessed by the divine. Be blessed by the divine. Thank you, Ma. Now I welcome Balajaya to take the next session. Eradication of Furis. Thank you. Thank you. Be blessed by the divine. Yes, yeah, screen sharing could enable one again. Oh, yeah. Over there, yeah. Okay. Hope you're all able to see the screen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Be blessed by the divine. War ho yagam. War ho yagam. War ho alamodan. Guru war. Guru vetani. Thank you, Bahadi Yama, for the wonderful session. Now we will uh, get into uh, the next session, Eradication of Bullies, for introspection level one. So contents for uh, this session, understanding the worries and fundamental reasons why do we worry, what are the symptoms, factors and outcomes that are underlying the worry and what we need to get as essentials in order to eradicate the worries and what do we practice. So these are the contents for today. So what do we mean by worries? So is there anyone in the world who has got no worries? 
almost everyone we could say like their mind is thinking about something and then it's causing some trouble to the mind and the body so almost we can tell there is no one in the world who is not having any problems or challenges or worries so what is worry so it is a gap between what we are expecting and what is really happening in the world so that's actually a gap and that our mind keeps talking and thinking about it and when the gap is not fulfilled we keep continuing about the thought why certain things are not happening the way we were thinking it should happen so it is a state of mind it's not actually the happening from the happening how do we perceive things so that is what is emanating as worry and when our desires are restricted this is another situation when our desires we think upon something and we try to achieve uh, enjoy or experience something and there is an obstacle and we get upset we try to impose our anger and authority in order to overcome that when certain things doesn't happen we always start worrying or maharishi says this is like an web imaginary web that we all get entangled around ourselves and because of our lack of education or lack of thoughts or lack of understanding or awareness we are constantly making this web even bigger and complex so it is basically a psychological disease with proper awareness understanding we should be able to come out of this one so in olden days there is an instrument to expel the water in tamil we call it as kavali kavali is like a big bucket or a container that extracts huge amount of water from well and pours out so basically it's to expel the water so same way this kavali is expelling lot of biomagnetism or energy from our body so that is why our people termed this as kavali kavali is something which takes out much from us so it drains our life force out of the body how does this happen so like we already see this is the physical uh, psychological thing it's happening in the mind so when the mind keeps worrying about or keep on thinking about things that are not happening so much of your bandwidth is going into this thing which is not happening rather than what you want to see as like a um, efficient things or things that matters to you more or the things of more value rather than this worry aspect so by doing that your mental energy is being wasted so biomagnetism is wasted so this is a poem from our uh, guru shri yogi rajveda tri maharishi worry is a psychological disease born of wrong calculations the reason he says wrong calculations is we think upon something which may or may not be right we think that is right but actually it may or may not be so that's why he says it's a wrong calculation and they arise on the account of confusion regarding the magnitude of the problem and sometimes we may think like it's a big problem but it may not be so that's a wrong assumption or a calculation that our mind makes oh this is a very big problem how do i handle this or what might happen if i'm not getting this so this is a psychological state so we already see uh, discussed few of this fundamental reasons how worry originates it's a difference between ex- expectation and happening 
we expect something either at home with dad or mom or spouse or children. We expect something and the reality is it may happen in a different way than you think. And the other person thinks that the way they want to, or they want the thing to happen, maybe the right thing. So it's a conflict between what we think and what's happening. So here comes worry, why people are not thinking the way I'm thinking and why people are not so um, calculative or not feeling this way I'm feeling. So difference between expectation and happening and difference between requirements and resources. So what is required in our life against what we really have and how much time and distance volume we talked about it in our previous sessions. So it's a gap between what is really needed and what we have. And our desires may be huge that we think we need all these things in order to be happy. So when do we get all these things? Can I get it tomorrow? Can I get it today? May or may not be depending on what we are thinking about it. If it's practically possible without affecting self, without affecting others and by nature, it should be possible in terms of time, distance, volume. So if that is possible, yes, whatever we are dreaming about, it's gonna happen. If it's not, then it's a, like a uncalculated expectation that may not happen the time that you're looking at. It may not happen today or tomorrow, but it may happen in a week's time or year's time but that needs a lot of diligent work that need to go in, in what is the gap. Again, opinions, what we feel about certain situations and what others think. These opinions differ. So, our Guru says, Nyani doesn't, does not in his mind, allow his mind to be ruled by wrong notions. Sorry, there's a typo. So he doesn't allow the mind to be ruled by wrong notions or biases. He always looks into the root of everything. Try to understand and be aware of what we are thinking, what we are dreaming about. So he thinks about the past experience and the present situation and future outcomes. So all these three things that Yani would think upon, analyze carefully, plan it, execute it, and achieve it. So that way, whatever you are thinking will come to reality. And there is no gap in the expectations. When you meet your expectations, there is no failure. There is no fear in your mind. There is no anxiety. In turn, you are not worrying because you are taking things practically as it is supposed to be. Another poem here from our Guru. Will the laws of nature accept expectations born of wrong calculations? It just meets out the rewards which ignorant fail to comprehend. I think it's self explanatory. So it is the ignorance in people that is preventing people to understand or comprehend the cause and effect nature of the law. So the nature gives whatever we are seeding. So what you seed is what you reap. So like that, whatever actions we are doing, there is a result depending on the action. We do right actions, we get right results. We do wrong actions, we get unexpected results. So the nature gives the right outcome, which we are either not educated enough to understand or simply by ego, we, are, we don't want to see the result, whatever the nature is giving. So that's what this poem is helping us to understand. So psychological states of worries. What happens when these worries come in? 
It brings in inefficiencies because we spend a lot of time thinking about it. And our state of mind is not doing the fruitful things because of which important things are get lost. It goes under the pile. A lot of unwanted things you, you keep piling above and above and above. And good things or important things or things that needs to happen on a timely manner, it all goes underneath. So you forget. And we miss deadlines, we miss uh, our commitments. And we feel like inefficient, even though we are spending a lot of time, we are not delivering the results. Ignorance of the order of nature and its function. Everything has got its own functions and it happens in the right time, right pace. So sometimes we should think upon the nature this entire universe, how all these planets are all located at this distance and it all does its job in a timely manner. What if these things stop or change its pace for a certain amount of time? For example, the Earth is spinning at a high speed, at a regular speed, and it's also orbiting around the sun. So what happens if it tends to move out or it goes out of balance for a moment, we will all be thrown out in the space. So nature in its, is playing its role in, in an orderly manner. It's not violating its function. It's not doing anything in an unorganized way. There is an order and it follows that law. So same way, whatever actions we are doing, it definitely is going to bring a result. So we need to plan our actions for the results that we expect. And inability to make judgments. What is going to be the outcome? Like we discussed in the previous point, what is going to be the outcome or <clears throat> judgment? We need to judge. If we are not able to do that or we don't want to do that, the result is going to come in front of us and we will think like, Oh my God, this is not what I was looking and I judged a different result, but it is showing me a different thing which I don't like. So we call all these as inefficiencies. We need to develop the skills that are required to bring in these efficiencies. Fear. When they both things all come into picture, then definitely our mind always thinks that are we not doing the right thing? Anticipation of consequences for mistakes already committed. We do wrong actions and the consequences are not going to be in our favor. So the mistake has already happened or the wrong action has already happened. And because of which there is a fear factor. What's going to happen now? I was expecting this and it has not happened. Now what do I do in order to correct that? What are the consequences in terms of money? in terms of relationships, in terms of health. So all these things are the psychological states of worries. It brings in inefficiencies and fear factor in our mind. So symptoms, how do we understand that we are in a constant worry? Our body, mind, soul, life, we could see all these symptoms. We feel sick, we get more uh, tension, stressed out, and we don't uh, see our body being fit. And because of which, a sound mind can live in a sound body. If your body is not good, your mind is not going to function properly. And we, as we see, some of the people would have already taken Kaya Kalpa, when your body is not well, it is not producing any good biomagnetism because of the lack of biomagnetism, your mind is not going to function properly and it's not going to supply the right amount of energy for all the cells throughout your body. So because of which you will see a lot of uh, things which we, you don't desire, like forgetfulness. You keep forgetting things. You don't concentrate on your job. 
So life problems start coming out. And because of this, there is a lot of things come as like a chain reaction. And your soul gets impured. Your mind doesn't think properly. And it starts accumulating bad things in your mind. And finally, your imprints get bad. You miss something and you try to protect, you protect, hide, suppress some things. It turns into a vengeance. And finally, your soul gets impured and we will constantly go into the vicious circle of life and death. So some of the factors, the root for origination of worry, anger. We get angry with people and because of which they may or may not align with your thoughts. And when anger gets more and more, your desires are not satisfied, then it becomes a vengeance. And jealousness, you are jealous about people or things or your um, official status of somebody else and hatred with other people, selfishness and uh, authoritative nature, power, of, uh, power addiction, fear factors, fearing yourself and causing fear to others, disrespecting others, disgrace, and talking big on our things, our self, and immoral sexual passion. So all these things are going to bring in worry. So that is why our uh, guru gives all these lessons in the introspection classes. Neutralization of anger, moralization of desires, analysis of thoughts. So all these three things, if we do properly, many of these factors will be knocked out. Neutralization of anger. We know how we methodically attack anger. And even before that, analysis of thoughts. Whatever thoughts it pops in your mind, the right moment the thought uh, pops out, you catch it. And you start to analyze, is it good? Is it bad? Why did I get this thought? If it is something good, okay, understand it. In order to uh, bring that thought into realization, what are the actions? Without actions, it's just a thought. It comes and flies away. So what do I do about it? So all your planning and execution comes into picture by which your thoughts are getting actioned and you get a desired results because of which you are not worried. But on the other way, if you're not handling your thought well, you're not taking any actions. It is just going to be a expectation or a wish list. We all have wishes, right? Big, big list. But very few come into reality. The others don't. So analysis of thoughts, neutralization of anger, moralization of desires, all these things help avoiding getting into the psychological state of worry. Any questions so far? From anyone, or are we good to proceed further? Yes, sir. Proceed first. Okay, thank you. So, it is another reporter. A strong mind that is good enough to face the spate of miseries has the power to overcome mishaps. So, like we've seen in the previous slide, when, our, when we are applying all our concepts, like analysis of thoughts, neutralization of anger, moralization of desires, your mind gets strong. And your mind is strong, you'll be able to face all the eventualities. And it has got the power to overcome all the mishaps or disasters. In first place, it will try to prevent it. That's what our practices are meant for. In first place, it should prevent, but if it happens, how do we methodically study it and get our actions lined up? Do your meditation, get your mind strong, 
and then do sankalpam blessings to your thoughts and it comes into actions so this duty consciousness provides strength to confront and resolve problems setting the mind free of worries when you do things right in right time in right order and in the magnitude it is required you are doing all your pre work in in our technical terms we call it feed forward instead of feedback feedback is something like when things happen you give a feedback how did it go did it go well or it did not so that's a feedback mechanism so on the other way we talk about feed forward before something happens we feed forward based on all the lessons all the learnings in the life we always give inputs in the beginning itself so by that everything happens in a right manner so that sets your mind free of worries you don't have to worry about anything when you do do things right so what are the outcomes we have already seen many many of this your physical strength goes down because you are spoiling uh, your uh, metabolic activities by taking more stress and because of which your mind is not strong and you keep missing things and become less efficient day by day so it goes down and you get medical uh, conditions and because of which the overall progress in your life goes down you have heard of uh, um things from our family or in office or the family members like my brother is stressed out or my husband is stressed out or my sister is stressed out she has got a lot of work working days and nights and there is a lot of uh, urgent deliveries they are sitting they are working more time there are a lot of issues in the launch they are solving problems and there are problems in the family with elder people with kids or between husband and wife so all these things indirectly cause your physical uh problems your blood pressure shoots up uh, your digestion gets bad so all these things you would have already heard in family so these are all some outcomes that we see and in resulting in success in life going down so what is difference between challenge and worry so everyone in life has got some challenge in some form at some places and to some people it could be anything no one in life will live without any challenge even our guru says like this life is stuck within this body so it constantly battles within our body to get out so that itself is a challenge so what is the difference between challenge and worry so when the challenge impacts your mind it's a worry as long as we see the challenge as it is and then try to solve it and it's not impacting your mind you're not stressed out it is just a challenge and there is always a resolution that you take by which it is solved you move on you don't carry that in your mind for a prolonged amount of time so when you carry it then it becomes a worry so what is needed here we need to learn how to overcome the challenges when we do that we are not going getting into the psychological state of worry so we must learn so that's this session is all about learning to solve the challenges to eliminate the worry so what do we need in order to learn about the worries and how do we practice certain steps like we did in the previous sessions three sessions same way we need to understand how do we understand this 
pocketized into different forms and develop actions for different scenarios. So we need to understand the law of nature. The law of nature is like cause and effect. Everything is resulted by its action. So you need to understand what we do is what is going to come back. So when we think we need to put good thoughts, we should have good thinking. Thoughts, words, deeds. Yennam sol sail. So all these things we need to make sure we are catching in the right moment and ensure alignment with our desires. So by that, the law, law of nature brings in the results that we are wanting to see. So thinking and analyzing skills, we need to start thinking what's needed, what's not needed, all the tabular things that we did in previous sessions, we need to do that diligently every single day throughout our lifetime. You know, my guru says like, till throughout your lifetime, we need to keep doing physical fitness exercises and mental exercises, thinking and analyzing things that come in life. So it is till our last breath, we should do that. It's not like just one day we do it or a couple of weeks we do it. Once we start doing and practicing this continuously, then it becomes a natural skill for us. We don't do by systematically sitting and putting the table. It becomes like an automatic thing in our mind. So we need to get these essentials. By doing this, our self-confidence grows. So growing the self-confidence needs all these meticulous activities from our side. And once we start doing that, it needs a lot of uh, discipline and consistency in ensuring the efforts are pursued and the efforts are done right. Not doing any shortcuts. There are no shortcuts for the right thing. Even if you would have tried in your uh, life, many of you would have already seen. You try to fast track or expedite or take a shortcut in order to achieve a right thing. Many times, there could be some incidents we would have succeeded, but it may or may not happen at all times. So in order to do the right thing, there is no shortcuts. We need to have our disciplined and consistent actions put into place in order to reap the rewards. And we need to be determined and we should be we should not give up at any point of time. So this is a similar same poem which we seen in the past. By wrong calculations, nature will give only wrong results. Nature is not going to give any results for the wrong uh, calculations. You will get what you want, what you see. It's a cause and effect. And ignorant people, they don't realize this. Measures and practice. So essentials. We need to gain physical strength, mental strength, by which all other things will fall in place. How do we gain all these? For physical fitness, we do exercises. Simplified exercises. And for life, energy, we need Kaya Kalpa Yoga. So by doing that, we are setting right the foundation. The body is fit. There lies the sound mind. When your body is fit, it gives the right amount of energy it needs for the whole metabolic activity and for the mind functions. And we do meditation in order to bring our um, thoughts lower, make it strong. And by that we do Sankalpam blessings to our thoughts to our thoughts words and deeds so by which our thoughts words and deeds get strong so when these get strong we do things properly and we always do introspection those are the classes we are undergoing now so the guru says like meditation is only to help you get strong in your mind. But in order to solve day-to-day -day activities, 
day to day problems you need introspection without introspection meditation is not going to heal uh, things because whatever the time you are doing meditation that is the time you are bringing your mind calm and sound so you need to introspect and then understand what you want analyze things and then during meditation you enable or you provide power to the actions and your thoughts that later comes into the reality so that is why this is all structured in this way you have physical fitness you have mental fitness for mental fitness you have meditation and introspection and understand the law of nature cause and effect and how things are functioning properly in the nature so we don't disturb it when we say order of function of the nature even uh, our body is acting in its own um, routine it has got timely actions for different organs in our body it's not asking us hey can i function your heart can i function your brain can i function your kidneys without our knowledge the autonomous system is doing all these things we are not regulating the speed we are not regulating the uh, contents in it we are not doing anything but the order of function is happening properly it's not only outside us it's also inside us so that is why we need to understand how our body functions properly that we need to give right amount of uh, physical activity we need to give right amount of food the right food not junkies and then we don't act against it the body is capable of processing things that it can process so we put junk things which it cannot process or it uh, spoils its function we are going against the nature by which we start seeing some physical conditions and then get some disease so for mental strength we understood this and for self uh, improvisation we do all this uh, structured studies which we understood in our previous sessions and we are going to learn something in this session as well analyze the problems put it in a proper uh, structure and then uh, study it action and then do hard work so these are measures and practices this that will bring the results so for analyzing the problems and planned approach that is where we see the tables that we worked upon so there are some other additional things do not complicate things there are problems yes it is a problem we need to just understand it rather than complicating it or exaggerating it or bringing too many things into it and then make the web complex and we should always understand what is our duties and others duties we should not indulge in others roles and responsibilities and overburden ourselves and then cause conflict with others we should understand what is our boundary is it really necessary and also understand everyone has got their freedom in life they are not come to live your life or you are not here to live their life so we should always understand the free the nature and let others lives are their lives and we should not we should respect their freedom of thoughts words and actions and adios to one's duties there are duties that we are required to do and we should not deviate from that for any reasons so being responsible and being what you are different so some people think like hey i'm being responsible so i'm taking up more things on my shoulder and i'm getting over burden stressed out so those are different being responsible and actioning is separate and being worried and not taking any actions and going into that uh, psychological state is different we need to have a clear distinction on what these are four types of worries what is that uh, we need to face it and what is that we are supposed to delay and by understanding the nature of it and there are worries that we just need to ignore it and there are certain things which we need to solve right away 
So let us see in detail some scenarios. <clears throat> what are these situations? So for example, there is a kid, a baby who is uh, with a polio condition. So with this condition, there is nothing in, uh, that uh, existing as of now to cure the condition. There are a lot of things in place in order to eradicate, to avoid it. But once it happens, it happens. That's it. So we can do nothing about it. Instead of keep worrying about it or uh, talking concerned or uh, complaining about it, we don't have a choice here. So these are worries that are to be faced. We need to prepare our mind and also help the child in all possible ways that he or she can cope up with life and also so succeed in whatever they want to be. So this is an example for things that need to be faced, things which we cannot face after all our analysis. We need to accept and live with that. Things that need to be delayed, to be kept in abeyance, prolong it. There are certain things which you cannot uh, do it right right away. For example, you're waiting for a good job. You are keep on, you are specialized in something and you are expecting a job in that field. You are not getting it. Since you're not getting it, you cannot uh, just jump into something which you don't like. If you do it, then you are going against your desires. So you need to prepare your mind accordingly or else it is going to be a conflict and you will end up in worry, a psychological state. So you need to be a little patient in order to find the right company or the right time or equip yourself to see if there is any gap in skills, the job needs and what you possess. So accordingly, we need to keep skilling ourselves and wait for the right moment. So that is, this is an example for waiting or delaying certain things that is not happening. Things that are need to be ignored. So for example, you have a neighbor who has got dog and the dog keeps making noise at random times, which you think like you need to be in uh, silence or you need to be at calm or you're studying, you're working, you're attending a meeting. So whatever in it is, we cannot do about if your neighbor is your friend, you can go talk and resolve it, which can be solved. But if some things are not solvable, then you just need to ignore. There are times which you, when you understand certain things which you are not able to impose your power or show your uh, anger and then resolve it, try to understand the benefits of that. By seeing at least the positive things, your mind will not get into a worry mode or complaint mode. So these are bit, uh, different strategies that we are trying to formulate to make our mind formulate something and then accept it. Even though it is an undesired thing, the dog is making noise at times. There are certain things which you can do to prevent. You can take meetings at a different place or you, you can request your neighbor to do an alternate thing. If that is not possible, you just accept it. It's there. We need to just uh, formulate different uh, actions or different means to do our things. So th these are things that need to be ignored. Or people, elder people at home, they keep complaining because of their age and uh, the pain they undergo because of their inability, uh, physically or mentally, they keep uh complaining or making um creating situations to bring in attention there are situations in families we would have seen so we need to patiently understand why they do that they have been 
so active for all through their life and now they are towards their um uh, uh uh towards their end of life so it's their inability to perform things that is causing concern so by which they are trying to show that aggression or anger to other people so these are certain things we need to understand and then ignore and things that needs to be solved immediately assuming we have we got a wound we met with small accident or we cut our fingers we need to immediately go and solve it or there are some medical conditions that you keep seeing it and you keep worrying and not taking any action those are certain things you need to immediately take it to a doctor's consultation and solve it rather than keeping it for long time and that converts into a bigger disease so we see we have seen in kaigal par practices there is a pain when there is a short circuit in your blood or uh, heat flows or oxygen flows there is a pain and pain when it is left for a prolonged time it converts into disease when disease unattended and prolonged for long time it could result in even death so these are certain things which we need to solve immediately so how do we uh, methodically solve and eradicate worries so we will do the same practice tablet things list your worries and bucketize into these four things which we already seen things that have to be faced delayed ignored and solved immediately and i think today morning session there was a maunam silence hours so during these times after the meditation people be in silence and then think about these things and then develop actions how do i go about it so when we are in silence your mind talks and with the mind talking you can understand and talk to your mind resolve things that are in conflict develop actions and post that we do a meditation and then enforce our thoughts for proper actioning at the at the end of the meditation so here are some problems and solutions when we are in poverty and there are some debts to be solved we need to do our sincere efforts to understand things and then understand financial things and then also do right things like making right purchases spending right doing some savings not wasting money all those things we need to study understand and then observe in order to come out of the poverty or debt conditions the diseases we do physical exercises in a disciplined way continuously and then take right medications at right time consult doctors in order to cure the diseases difference in opinion try to understand people what they are talking about listen and then see the underlying reasons why certain talks are coming why certain conflicts are coming and then we need to also understand people are different they are here with their own imprints they have their own karma they have their own life to live so we need to understand and tolerate people with different skill sets different uh, capacities we need to adjust along with them and with that clarity we can resolve the difference in opinions even that for that matter not only in office it happens with your brother sisters parents or spouse they are all different we need to understand whatever opinions we think it may or may not fall in line at all times so world will be so difficult if we see everyone is uh, they say it won't be beautiful if we don't see the differences everyone will look like you life will not be interesting so these all different people bring in all different situations that are interesting conflicting so life becomes a journey of experimenting all these things so greed and jealousy and realize the temperament and contentment what it is going to bring in in the future being selfish you are just going to be all alone you are not going to get your good friends and people will and judge easily that you are being greedy so you need to just understand the few uh, ill effects and then change your thoughts and actions wealth fame and prominence you need to understand the morality 
are we doing the right thing in order to get the wealth and fame and also we should understand there is enough for everyone in this world it's not like a very limited resources so the world is so abundant life has got a lot of abundance so we need to have that abundance mentality and then to selfless service so by which what you give is what you're going to get back so some problems and solutions we've seen additional thoughts origin understand the origin and nature of the worries without being struck by the magnitude how big or how small it is don't get stuck and try to understand and then reason it there is no lock that cannot be opened the answer lies in right key finding the right key is the key so have courage confidence and wisdom to resolve the challenges so doing the right things will bring in all these things like a second nature you don't have to specifically do anything about the courage confidence or wisdom if you understand the right thing practice it practice it and practice it these things come as a end result so what appears as a problem today may not even exist tomorrow so as a final note plan approach with a good awareness of what's happening and what we are doing introspection provides essential skills for confronting and solving problems and by doing all these things the right things will happen and peaceful life follows from there on as well divine thank you for the opportunity and re yeah be plus by the divine any questions i'm sure like a lot of people would have encountered a lot of conflicts or confrontations what the life so all you need to do is we never got the practice of tabulating this so because of which we will constantly run one after the other either get solved or not there are new things that come into picture and we start running after that yeah walk over madam no no madam yeah Uh, so you were explaining about that uh, acceptance actually worryness acceptance actually so uh, our dearest ones actually may be passed away uh, due to the wellness and all those things the acceptance i know that uh, we need to accept that actually so they passed away uh, which means no need to worry about it actually somehow in our inner thoughts we have we may have worries you know uh, we may not forget about them actually maybe our mother may maybe our beloved lovable person you know uh, so i know that we need to accept that actually so somehow some day i will get to remember them and then uh, i will little bit worry about it right maybe people may be worry about it how to avoid that actually so okay it's a very uh, uh... a live a question that happens to all of us so see one thing is our mind always thinks about it as a loss and they are not with us so when we look at this passing away is as a loss then our mind keeps getting into the painful situation so what happens to our life after this one so like our practices we all learn right after life we all get aligned with divine state so everyone has come with a ticket to go back so sooner or later everyone is in that uh, path and we are all in queue so definitely it is going to be uh, painful in terms like when we at at some occasions and all those things we miss them but it is a life that they lived to the fullest they had their life they lived it and they did all things that they are uh, seen life and with a fulfilled life people go back to the divine state and they always stay safe and stay well with the divine state so with that mentality it gives us a uh, 
sense of comfort that okay they are with the divine state and every time we do divine state uh, meditation we are always reaching out to the divine state and come back that is where we are all going to belong at the end so with them understanding that they are in the safe hands at the divine state they becoming the divine state our mind gives a little bit of comfort and you rightly said your our mind accepts but at times we keep thinking about it it is true the mind keeps coming but always bless that thought that it is it the soul is in the divine state when you keep saying that you are not worried many times that comes as a worry that the soul may be suffering but always give blessings that the soul be with the divine and it is safe and comfort so with that our mind gradually gets comfortable and we don't feel like they are missing they are with the divine i hope that answered yeah yes sir yeah uh, <laughs> <At time>. yeah <laughs> so uh, as lo- a last statement right uh, you said actually in the blessing of divine right if you yeah. think about it actually uh, we have to thank them we have to uh, you know uh, uh, as a blessing of uh, divine state we have to bless them right we will yes. yeah it will solve the yes. problem yeah you are right yeah yes yes a few things we need to consider at this point number 1 the birth number 2 is the the passing after this life in this world which is called as death right so birth it's a it's an extract or you know the other term it is a garbage coming out of us which is making this body physically exist and it is it is an action likewise the the end of the existence in this world means the body which is constructed with the five elements is the only one is going back and the genetic center and the life particles are going back to its divine state genetic center until it completes its imprint there's there's no death for the genetic center that means if someone passes away from this physical world the body where the life energy the mind and the genetic center lived in is going back to the five elements the original state but the genetic center does not die it is going to go and descend upon to the loved ones and the ones who are in the line with the same mind state or state of mind and they get that the genetic center goes and lives in there so the person who passes away physically they're left but would their energy feel they're still living hey just to add yeah and uh, they are connected with the person right i mean man they are they are connected with their loved ones so the loved ones growth is actually and and blessings will benefit uh, them so pentagon arulaya so uh, your growth is what you can do for them and your blessing so yeah so that so you are uh, uh, that's what we can do so that that uh, really it hit us an impact uh, you are connected right so so that 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 is what it is yeah yeah yes yeah thanks yeah. thanks bro yeah thanks arulaya yeah. so for kind words and then uh, you know uh, for the uh, appropriate explanation yeah thanks yeah i don't know what to do Welcome. Yeah, I think we are over time. We will uh, conclude our session. Uh
Ayarulaya, we will conclude our session, right? Uh, we have five minutes. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Please. Yeah, yeah. if there are more questions, we can discuss in further sessions. Yeah. We'll conclude our sessions with the blessings for the world. Uh, before that, uh, uh, we'll bless our Arunadi Balaji Ayya. By the grace of divine power, Arunadi Balaji Ayya and his family may enjoy good health, long life, enough wealth, prosperity, wisdom, and peace. Be blessed by the divine. Let's conclude our session.